and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. And today we're going to have a look at um, my solving of today's puzzle in the Times. Now it's quite an interesting one because today's puzzle in the Times was one of the three used in Heat 1 at the Times National Crossword Championship um, three weeks ago. And I didn't sit in that heat was actually originally asked to take part in it but in the end um, I asked to change because my son had a football tournament at that time uh, so I was able to watch some of that before coming on to the second heat. Um, I hadn't done the puzzles from the first heat so you know I feel I can uh, solve them as fresh from the um, papers printing of them and so I tried to do it as I think I would do a competition puzzle and um, I'll pause the video as we go along and tell you what I'm thinking about as I as I look at each clue and we'll start with this first clue one across which is the first one I looked at um, horses trappings a Trojan prince wrapped in fleece and their Trojan prince um, the first thing I'm trying to do when I try to cold solve the first clue is to find some obvious wordplay. And the Trojan Prince comes in the middle of the clue, so it can't be the definition. So we need something quite short for a Trojan Prince. Now, if you ask me to come up with a short Trojan, I might think of Ajax. There aren't that many that I would know. Hector, perhaps. Paris is the first one who's definitely a prince. Um, and one might think immediately, well, what is the chance of Paris being wrapped in something to make a word? But happily for me, I've been doing crosswords long enough to have learnt that there is a word caparison, which is something you put on a horse ornamentally. I'm not exactly sure what, but horses' trappings certainly seems to fit. And if you put a Paris, a Trojan prince, in a word for fleece, which is con, you get that comparison. So, gonna start off the uh, video as I began to solve. I saw that, you know, there was a moment where I thought, Paris, can you put that anything in anything? Yes, you can. And um, in went comparison. So then look at one down. Firm piece of advice rejected. Suffer the consequences. Now I will have started immediately having got one across which is a great helpful start because it gives you five starting letters which will really help guide your thoughts um, and this one down is a two-word phrase three letters and two letters um, so there's not that many things that will fit i think i immediately thought of cut up as a possibility but the clue doesn't really work for that so the clue says firm piece of advice rejected suffer the consequences now, firm can often be company, CO. So, as always, we're looking for short synonyms. We've got the C, that seems very likely. Um, and at that point, I'm thinking, do I know any phrases that are three, two, that mean suffer the consequences and begin with co? And um, I, th I thought of copied immediately. I'm not actually sure if I was confident enough to work out what piece of, piece of advice rejected was, that it's tip written upside down, or whether I just thought, well, it's something for pit or similar, and just put it in. And, but I certainly uh, decided that that was certainly going to be the answer. I had a look at two down and couldn't solve it. I'm going to pause again. Proud punter beginning to row boat for a change. And... Um, I couldn't see what was going on there. Proud punter has P's in, is 11 letters long. I couldn't see that that should be anagrammed. I did quickly think of whether I could think of an anagram of that. The for a change at the end suggests that that's not the definition part, though. So proud was probably going to be the definition. I couldn't think of an 11-letter word for proud immediately beginning with P. So I passed on to three down. Now, three down is one of those where that first letter is really helpful. Greek character on passenger vehicle carrying minute figure. Well, as so often, the Greek alphabet needs to come into play. As soon as it says Greek character, that reads quite well for the surface because it suggests a person. 
but to the crossword solver it suggests a letter from the Greek alphabet. Well, the only one that begins with R is their equivalent of R, which is Rho, R-H-O. So at that point, I'm pretty confident the answer is going to begin Rho. And the carrying minute figure bit of the clue suggests to me that minute has to be reimagined as minute. So I'm looking for an M in a clue and an M in the answer with a passenger vehicle as well. Didn't take me long to think of rhombus, which is a figure, obviously. That's quite a vague definition, but luckily all the wordplay is very clear. You've got row on bus carrying minute, which is M. So rhombus goes in, and then after that I moved on to forward out which says, sort of philosophy, actor gets involved in thus. Now, as usual, looking for short synonyms, thus would normally give us so. Um, and I was quickly trying to think of putting an actor in so, but I couldn't see how that would give a sort of philosophy. And I think somewhere the, the actor gets involved in the sort of philosophy jibed quite nicely in my head. Um, to give me the idea of Socrates, and I realised that if you anagrammed actor to get Ocrat, you could put it in a different word for thus, which is seek, to get it, to give Socratic, which is a sort of philosophy. So that was quite straightforward too. So things going quite well in this puzzle. And five down, simple person's word of refusal upset the Spanish party. Well, again, unpacking that as a regular crossworder, the Spanish is almost always E-L-L, -L, and a party is a do, D-O, and a word of refusal is no. So even if you can't work out quite what the word play is telling you to do with the bits, given the starting N, you might be able to come up with a simple person using the letters N-O, E-L, and D-O, and that's noodle, which is in fact no on L-do turned upside down. So the simple person is a noodle there. And again, that's pretty straightforward. Now, as usual, having done um, as many as I could off the downs using the letters that had gone in, now I've got some letters for the acrosses. So I jump to them. Um, I still very, very much recommend highly not trying to cold solve clues with no letters in the grid if you have an alternative. A nine across, short advert for a second. Um, well, a short advert can be a promo, and I thought of that immediately. Um, I think I did check the word play for being pro and a second being mo, as in hang on a mo, um, and that went straight in. I did vaguely think at the time that... Um, if promo fitted, photo could as well. You sometimes have to be a little careful between those two um, because a photo and a promo do slightly similar jobs to some extent. But I gave it no more thought at this time. We'll come back to that at the end. And I filled in promo and went on to 10 across, which says peevish cashier in combative exchange of views. Well, peevish, given the C blank O, looks like cross straight away. I think I started filling that in before working out the rest of the clue because it's so likely and so many um, compound words begin with cross, like cross patch and cross word. Um, cashier. Now, one of the things cashier says to me is there's not many alternative synonyms for a cashier, as in the clue sense, or the clue's apparent sense, of someone who works on a till. But... There is a verb to cashier, which means to sack somebody. And I could very quickly think of fire as a synonym for sack. That goes with cross to make crossfire, which is a combative exchange of views. And then straight on to 11 across. Now I could see just from the letters in the grid that thumbnail is very likely. T, three somethings, B, something A, something L. And the only thing that really goes with thumbnail is thumbnail sketch. Barely need to read the clue. Brief review, again, that's very clear. Thumbnail sketch works. And the small vessel is an S catch with digital protection. A thumbnail is effectively digital protection. So after this, things have gone quite well. I don't return to two down because I struggled with it before. 
Um, so I jump on to ten across, which has got two letters. Now they're towards the end, which isn't so good. And actually, I do remember one of the things that first flits through my mind is, can I think of words that fit that immediately? And I thought of acrostic and wondered if I was going to get a clue to that, which I didn't this time. Um, and the, uh, the clue is hide from royal runner in study. Now I can see that the possibility hide always, I immediately think what could hide mean that's not conceal oneself? And it could mean um, hide as in the sense of leather or the skin of an animal. And of course, skin fits at the end of this answer. So I'm looking for one of the four letter skin, four letter and then skins. There are quite a few of these compound words. So bear skin, seal skin, deer skin would all fit. Um, and the re I have to check the rest of the clue, therefore. Hide from royal runner in study. Now that looks like the whole thing is going to go into a word meaning study. And there are a few words meaning study. Um, read, scan, con. They're all verbs meaning study. And den is sometimes used as a noun for somebody's study. Um, so den did make, take me back to deer skin and the rest of that is er as the royal and ski as the runner because a ski is a runner in something so i could see that that was deer skin and again the crossword's still going very quickly at this point and i go back to two down now i've got a lot of letters in the grid had to think about this a little bit because again the o and the u is still making me think about an anagram of proud to some extent but that's not what the clue's about in fact, I did then come up in my mind with an adjective for proud that fits that pattern. Um, and the way to get to that is with the letters of punter, um, the beginning of row, which is the R, and boat. So punter, R, boat, anagrams to this word for proud, which is protuberant, meaning proud as in sticking out. So now I'm not quite sure where to go. I try 13 down because I've got the D. It's the starting letter. That's always more helpful than another letter. Um, and it would be very useful to the solve if I could get some more initial letters. So I'm hoping that I can come up with something for 13 down. Fellow left to connect to collect new item of furniture. Left is normally the letter L. Fellow, I'm thinking immediately of Don, since I've got the D at the start of the clue. That's one of the things that fellow can become. But that doesn't quite work. And I'm thinking about furniture. The fact that left is written in the clue, I see the letters of left, and I thought about Delftware. But although that's something that's made to look pretty, it's not furniture. So I moved on, and somehow I came up with the idea... Again, just as L, left can be L, new can often be N. So I'd started to try and think of an item of furniture beginning with D, nine letters long with an N in it. And I did think of Davenport, which is some sort of sofa. Fellow, I suddenly realised, could be Dave. And at that point, I just need to work out how left can be port, and that's in the naval sense. And so that gives me the answer, Davenport. I think that took a few more seconds than some of the others because of all the possibilities. I was prepared to spend quite a few seconds on this clue because those initial letters would be so helpful. And then we move straight into the answers with those initial letters. 16 across, V something A. Now not much fits there. I'm immediately thinking viable or viably as a possibility. And the clue is half dozen in Rome and I'm immediately thinking, yep, six in Roman numerals is VI, so that kind of confirms the VI start. With capacity, that's able, and that all becomes realistic, which is viable. So that was pretty straightforward, almost what I was expecting. 21 across, again, I'm trying to think of possibilities even before I read the clue. Um, didn't really come up with much. I was wondering if it would begin with nut or nothings or something. Couldn't think of an eight-letter word that was obviously going to begin end something T. The clue is race little boy about to go to the French art establishment. Um, I did start thinking, do I know any French art establishments apart from the Louvre? 
But then as soon as I thought of the Louvre, I thought oh, our own equivalent of the Louvre is the National Gallery, and that's going to fit 8-7. So I start, I think, actually, to fill that in as soon as I've thought of it, because it's so likely, so such a perfect fit. I suppose it could be national or something else. Um, but as I fill it in, I work out that race could be nation, little boy could be Al, in the sense that it's a boy's name, slightly shortened, um, and about to go to the French. Um, uh, about to go to the French now needs to mean gallery. I'm not actually sure if I ever figured out quite how that did work, but Allais is the French for to go. Ah, there we go. The little boy's Algy, not Al, short for Algernon. Um, so he's been put about Allais. So as, it, as we can see, I didn't work that one out in full. But I put in National Gallery and was confident if it was national anything else by any chance, then the crossing letters will put me right. Straight on to 17 down, because I've got two letters near the start, L something O, not many things fit there. One who may have pride in her companions, question mark. Well, I think anybody could get that, surely. I mean, it's not, um, it's not a standard crossword clue with word play and um, a definition. It's just what we call a cryptic definition. It's just a slightly concealed definition. And just as in two down where proud didn't mean um, vain, it meant sticking out. Here pride doesn't mean vanity. Um, and one who may have pride in her, so it's a female, companions is lioness. Um, pretty classic type of crossword clue. That, that could almost have appeared in the Bletchley Park puzzle that I was solving earlier in the week. Um, 23 across, we've got an E in the middle and an O at the start. Revolutionary way, and given the letters I'm thinking otherwise would be doing something in a revolutionary way, but otherwise doesn't quite fit with that E, so that's not right. Revolutionary way, gunners pursue ends of other players. And I wasn't too sure what was going on there. Um, but it suddenly occurred to me the gunners, as well as the nickname for Arsenal, that can certainly be the nickname for the Royal Artillery, the RA. And if they're pursuing something, would there be any words that have that O and that E and end in RA? Well, there is one, and it's very familiar, very common in crosswords for some reason. Orchestra, and that can mean players. So that's clearly likely to be the answer. Um, the ends of other are O and R, because they're the letters that appear on the ends of other. And the che chest is actually not a chest. It's made up of... Che, as in Che Guevara, a famous revolutionary, and the way is a street, ST. So it's a pretty complicated makeup of that clue. Four separate parts, all coming together to mean orchestra. Um, 24 down said Charlie, that can be the letter C in the phonetic alphabet, um, the radio alphabet, that is. Neat participant in boat race, perhaps. And neat can so often be translated into ox or bull or cow. Um, and here, ox is the first thing I thought of. That can go straight after Charlie, C, to make cox. Clearly a participant in boat race, perhaps. Very straightforward. And 26 across, T blank X blank S. And certainly the first thing I thought of there was Texas. Although it did occur to me that taxes would also fit. But the clue didn't seem to fit either of those words. It says, cheers, football teams, they're going places. Cheers can be tar, T-A, same sort of meaning. And then football teams, well, that can be 11s, which in the kind of older, maybe public school style way of recording an 11 is XIs. And that gives us taxis, which I hadn't thought of at first, but they are certainly things that are going places. So in goes taxis. And again, there's really been very few holdups in this puzzle. Now on to 20 down with an A and a T in a six letter word. Sacred word in a set of books collected by male, art male artist. 
Well, the first thing I think of with a sacred word itself and translates as om in crosswords, but om is a mantra, and mantra clearly fits. So I'm liking mantra as an answer. A set of books, well, the New Testament is one of the familiar sets of books. That can be A N T. And if that gets collected by male, M, and artist, R-A, then that gives us mantra. And we can see in this puzzle, we're getting tons and tons of crossword E's. So for regular solvers, they're seeing things with which they're familiar again and again. R-A for gunners, R-A for artist, M for male, N-T for books. What else did we have? Che for revolutionary. Um, cheers for tar. It's there's an awful lot of crossword ease in this, and I have to say, it's a little surprising to find a puzzle with so much crossword ease in a championship. Normally, the puzzles are the more inventive ones, certainly in the final, where they're not kind of. <laughs> relying on these crutches for clue writers. It makes clue writing more easy if you use ER for royal and N for new. Clue writing is harder if you have to unpack the words into larger parts and if you use words with which people aren't quite so familiar. So this is a slightly easier puzzle to write in my view, but significantly easier to solve with experience. Probably not as easy for a newcomer. In fact, a lot of these abbreviations and um, short synonyms are quite difficult for newcomers to come up with because they don't know what you're really allowed or what, what's to be expected. So I'm not a massive fan of this sort of puzzle that uses those things. It's, I can solve them quite quickly and that's fine, but I don't think that the compilers really helping newcomers. I don't think he's leveling the playing field for people. I think he's just emphasizing the difference between experienced solvers and new solvers. But we'll carry on anyway. 27 across, where some may hear a posh leader endlessly. And I was thinking where, I obviously didn't spend long on that. I couldn't solve it at that time. Although I had thought that where some may hear looks like the definition and audiences would fit, but auditoria, plural of auditorium, would also fit. And a posh could be a u, but I couldn't see how leader could be dictoria endlessly. It's not quite dictator without its last letter. So I moved on. I, I didn't really understand what I was looking for, although I was conscious that it could well be auditoria. I think that helped me with 15 down. Um, got a G and an A. Now if that did end in a D for auditoria, then guard or grand is quite likely as the end of that. And the clue is person keeping eye on commercial vehicle perhaps in front. And there are a few words that end in guard, which is a person keeping an eye on something, and it's vanguard. Now it looks like the um, parts of the clue are in the wrong order. Person keeping eye is guard, and then commercial vehicle is van. But of course, a vanguard would theoretically be a person keeping an eye on a commercial vehicle. And a vanguard can be a military front. So that's the answer there. Oh, I didn't get it. That's interesting. I thought I got that straight away. Maybe oh, I rechecked auditory. You can kind of see me checking the possible D there. And then vanguard goes in. Then I moved on to 2019 down. Um, Dependent on arrest. As soon as I've seen dependent, and I know it's seven letters with an L in third, I was thinking reliant could be the answer. And it says on arrest being set up on time, or times the T, on in this case translates to re, and then arrest being set up has to be L-I-A-N, and that's nail being set upwards. So reliant works perfectly well. And then we jump onto 22 across, a so Y is the first letter, and Yankee in the clue, which is Y. Yankee area accommodating key conference center once. Well, I may not have known um, about the House of Guys in my more ancient French history, but I do know some World War II history, and that there was an important conference at Yalta 
in the Crimean. So Yankee is Y, area is A, and if you put a key, which is Alt, from your computer keyboard into that, you get Yalta. Um, so that was very straightforward. Then 25 across, a range of hearing is... Um, Trying to restart the puzzle. There we go. A range of hearing. Oral means of hearing. A U R A L, and a ural is a range as well as a river in Russia. Now I've put in auditoria and worked out that the leader endlessly is an editorial without either of its ends e or l. Um, and on to twelve down. It looks like it ends in bearer. And the clue is attendant, one enduring it in clement weather after end of shoot. Well, the end of shoot is the T that we have at the start. One enduring is the bearer. And so the inclement weather is rain, and that gives us train bearer, where the one enduring inclement weather is a rain bearer, in theory. It's quite a nice pun. Um, and on to... 18 across, again, I've looked at those letters and seen straight away the possibility of warranty, which would fit as I read the clue, which starts with guarantee. So that's absolutely, well, absolute certainty is, is what I've got. Guarantee with absolute certainty, ultimately. And um, the with is a W there, and absolute is arrant, as in an arrant rascal, perhaps. Um, and now we've just got one corner left to do. Six down. Again, I'm looking at the S and K as I go up there and thinking that Pushkin could fit if we get a Russian composer or writer. Writer, isn't he? And as I read the clue, it starts Russian writer. So that's simple enough for me. Um, sort is, sort mostly is kind without its last letter and supporting press is push. And seven down, boxer, it begins, three letters ending in I, so I'm certain the answer is going to be Ali straight away. And the wordplay there, slightly more complex, son ditched by girl is Alison losing S-O-N, becoming Ali. And tried eight across and couldn't see this immediately. Um, too quick to have yarns regularly spun. Once it says regularly, I'm probably taking alternate letters from some word. But I couldn't see how that was going to help me with an anagram at this point. Um, I, I, I hadn't spotted, I think, that to have, which are very innocent words in a crossword clue, could actually be providing some of the anagram fodder. So I think after a few seconds consideration of that, I jumped across to six across, beginning P something A, um, quiet fellow taking dip in river, or the quiet convinced me that the answer was going to be the musical word for quiet piano, um, which is made up of, in this case, Ian being a fellow dipping into Po, the Italian river. Another more classic crossword standard stuff there. Like how many... How many men in the street would think of Po as a river? But a crossworder thinks of it as one of the first two or three rivers that are possible. And um, Piano is the answer. Now, I had been sort of thinking that eight down would be over heavy or something to something. Um, and I think by now I have a look at it and realize that over hasty will fit and means too quick. And now I can sort of see that to have YRS anagrams into over hasty. So that goes in. One clue left. I haven't looked at it at all yet. 14 across. Um, couldn't think of anything that fitted immediately, although plenty of things would. Books, university set aside for records. And again, I'm reasonably familiar with the idea that annals and annuals are quite similar words with just a U difference. So the records are annals, and if you have certain books that are annuals and you set aside the U for university, you get annals. So I'm all done. I'm pretty happy with that. Even in a crossword competition, as this was in, had I been in that first semi-final, I don't think I'd have spent any more time other than perhaps checking that I'd written everything I meant to. 
Um, and I was very surprised when, having pressed the submit button, the answer is returned to me in a second with one of the answers wrong, apparently. And I had a look at that. The, the pink letters highlighted there suggest that I've got the um, intermediate letters of promo wrong. And I thought, oh my God, the clue must actually have led to photo. And I must not have disambiguated between the two. There must have been a similar definition um, and wordplay that actually distinguished between promo and photo. So I've gone back to have a look at the clue. And I, I was shocked because I hadn't remembered thinking that that was a risk, but this sort of thing can happen. So, you know, I was thinking this is embarrassing. I'm going to show up myself in a moment and I've got one wrong. But then I have another look at the clue. Short advert for a second. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that that does clue promo. And um, at this point, I'm beginning to realize that there's been a mistake by the newspaper or by the by the publishers of, of this puzzle. Somehow, a different answer, I bet it's photo, has been um, assumed as the correct answer, marked accordingly by the computer, and I've been marked wrong. So I'm not too troubled, because in an actual championship, you'd obviously have the chance to argue that, that you were right, and they would have to judge that you were right, on that, given that clue. So uh, it was quite funny. I was very worried that I had made a mistake. I do make mistakes. They happen quite, you know, every so often. But um, I was very surprised to see that I'd made one in this in a championship puzzle. But in fact, not my mistake. I think that mistake is quite clearly by um, the Times today. So bad luck if you've been caught by that as well today. Congratulations if you finished the puzzle. The time that is definitely as fast as I've ever solved a championship puzzle. Four minutes and four seconds. I mean, even to me, that's a bit ridiculous. Again, there's been very little doubt as we've gone through that, that it's mainly because of the classic crosswoodies that came up again and again, and we've been through it all. Um, almost every clue re needed some bit of familiarity with crossword abbreviations or standard words. And as I say, I don't think that makes the puzzle any better, but it certainly makes it much easier for an experienced crossworder. If if you really want to get good at crosswords you get, or good at solving crosswords quickly, you're going to need all of those bits. But um, I don't think they're necessarily the most rewarding puzzles in some ways. But you know, it was still entertaining. There were some clever clues there. I like the cryptic definition for lioness and the ideas in um, train bearer of a rain bearer and in vanguard of a vanguard were neat enough. So um, there's some good clues, but not one of my favorite puzzles, I'd say. Um, but a heck of a fast time. I'm not, not displeased with that. Thank you very much for watching and uh, hope to join you again. I hope this talk through has been helpful.